Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A, emails number 102, where you send your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I will do my best to answer and let's get right to it. First one is called Flat Earther. Hey, Mark watched all your volumes again last night on YouTube, and I've been noticing all over the place how they are taking pics and, of course, using good old CGI to try to keep up the biggest lie. And yes, this particular man sent me different pictures of the Chicago skyline, some with and some without fisheye lens, otherwise known as peephole lens. Uh, he finishes the letter with, uh, let's check these out. It'd be cool if you would mention my name when you talk about this certain subject of them using these new pics. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, and may God bless us all, ever the stub bless us all, even the stubborn like my own father. And this was, it was sent by Matthew Dooley. So thank you for that. And yeah, I will email him and say I read this on the beginning of number 102 and you could do this with just about any city but it was great that he sent these for perspective so awesome this one's called flat earth freebies mark can you please send me the flat earth freebies i am hoping you're not a shill with a dollar sign in it uh i see things differently now alan p.s the last name is pronounced knutson I am the one from a year ago. Trying to believe in you, shill not sure. Ah, I see what you did there. Instead of still not sure, he put a T, or it, it's an H, so shill not sure. It's, it's, clever. it's clever, it's good. This one's called Copyright Strange World 84. Uh, been a long time since I've been in there. Uh, look around. Uh, no, some music. Oh, yeah, so what the question was, it's from Bill Keith. Um, uh, some of the, it's not a copyright issue. What happened was, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, uh, ACDC and Fleetwood Mac had both, both changed their song policies. Uh, uh, Fleetwood Mac changed it for a song I was using called Tusk and ACDC did when I, the brief span was I was up in Canada and I was using ACDC Thunderstruck. And so it's been, they're being blocked. So I had to tear down and re-upload several episodes from uh, like 82 through 86, I believe. So if you see a bunch up there, I'm not even putting re-upload on them anymore. You guys kind of understand what I'm doing because I'm up to episode 170 something. You get it. This one's called Why So Biblical? Hey, Mark, I am watching the conference on YouTube and just don't understand why they are focusing so much on the Bible. I believe the earth is flat because of all the clues, and I believe in God, but not the angry, jealous, jealous, immature one in the Old Testament. I am a mystic with God in my heart, and it seems the religious dogma at the conference would be a great deterrent uh, to would-be flat earthers. What about all the other people following religions other than Christianity in this earthly plane with their love-filled hearts? Why can't they be included in the flat earth realization? Uh, and that's from D. So uh, you guys know my feelings on this. Look, I was raised a born again Christian. I went to vacation Bible school and youth group and camp Malibu and just about everything you could think of. And honestly was not exposed to any other religions until I got off the island and went to university. And then I fell away from spirituality when I got into tech because, uh, you know, tech is most notably tied to science. And then when I got into Flat Earth, I came right back to spirituality. So that being said, uh, the, the conference, look, it, it was being organized by a primarily Christian group. Robbie Davidson is a very strong Christian. And so he is going to lean towards the Christian side. Now, to his credit, when he did the Denver conference this year, he had two tracks. So if you didn't want to listen to Christian stuff, it would be on one stage. And if you want to listen to Christian things, it would be on the other stage. If it's all, if it's an entirely Christian conference, it's it's going to deter people. And if it's an entirely secular conference, it's going to deter people. And by that, I mean, atheism really has a tough time with Flat Earth because if it was built 
then there's a creator. And if there's a creator, by default, that means there's something higher than ourselves that, that designed this place. Now, you can say, oh, no, it's an advanced civilization. Well, then you're splitting hairs. Again, one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity. So hopefully that helps. This one's called Experiment Idea. Hi, Mark. Here's my idea. Please tell me if you think it is sound. Uh, fly a plane from the North Pole to the South Pole or near enough. Place a glass container full of ink aboard the plane. Upon reaching the South Pole, the container must be completely covered in ink as the plane will be upside down relative to when it took off. If the container is only half covered, Earth is flat. That's from Jeff. And uh, well, actually, the the better thing would have been just flying north to south. I mean, why why would you need to complicate it at all with the the ink thing? Can you fly from the North Pole to the South Pole? If you remember, there was supposed to be a historic north south transit type thing that was going to be happening, and the website was built, and they were charging like ten thousand dollars a person to to go, and you weren't allowed to bring in scientific experiments, and then all of a sudden the website gets shut down and the um in fact look up uh, the, there was a guy one of our uh, uh, guys that goes against us named youtube channel of uh, greater sapien he bought a ticket on there and there were people they were saying oh he should give his money back and you know because he did a crowdfunding thing to to go on this to get his ticket and he lost everything from what i understand i mean the website literally was just like vanished i don't know if, if these people were real or not but it was a very well done production and then they just canceled it at the last minute so look that up if you get a chance this one's called denver Hi, Mark. I'm glad I got to introduce myself and my husband, Brad, to you and Patricia in the lobby on Wednesday uh, the 18th. I am the one who thanked you for answering my emails and you joked about not getting that many. Do you recall that? <laughs> uh, we had a good time overall. It was so very disappointing about Logan Paul. My disappointment is aimed at Robbie Davidson. This is an example of what can happen when people get into positions of power and have no accountability. This is also a reason, an example of, of why the way the government of the United States was originally set up uh, was a very good thing, the three branches and all. Of course, it has become corrupt now, but the point is you can't just have one man running the show. This could have been avoided if he had consulted with you and Rob Skiba and others, not that I am wanting to bash Davidson, but as much energy and, and as excitement there was to be able to be there and meet all of you and so many flat earthers, I found Davidson to be unfriendly and rude. Ooh. I, I did not see that. Uh, now it takes a certain kind of person and all to do what he does. But again, I hope he will learn to create some accountability. I met this really great family and wonder if you would have a contact for them. His name is Shade something. He has sort of long hair. We had a great conversation at the after party. Well, I hope all is well with you. Sorry for the length, Teresa. Shade, huh? If anybody knows... Uh, I'm, I don't know if I remember a, a guy named Shade, but if somebody knows who it is, please email me. In fact, I'll just put her email address out here. Uh, Teresa's email is Teresa Leskinen. So that's T H E R E S A L. I'm sorry. T E T H E R E S A, Teresa, and then Leskinen. L E S K I N E N at hotmail.com this one's called elon musk tweets flat earth right before the strange world show mark have you ever seen elon musk's tweet a day before your strange world show okay so it was sent on i don't see a date i don't see a date but he supposedly sent a tweet that says elon musk uh, and he, it was, he was doing a survey. Earth is flat, 17% with a check mark next to it. Hollow, 24%. And flat and hollow, 59%. And it had 340,000 votes. Uh, and it still had 18 hours left. And I don't know much about it. So yeah, you guys look up what Elon Musk has been tweeting recently. Interesting. If it's real. This one's called Interested in Knowing More. 
Hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Michael. I've been watching your videos along with others on YouTube about the Flat Earth. I have to say it is all very compelling and I'm starting to believe. I'm a Buddhist and as such, Buddhism teaches me to seek the truth of life and of reality and to question everything. Basically, a see for yourself and go with the flow attitude. So I would like to talk with you and know more about the Flat Earth. I'm starting to believe you are right. I tried texting you since you have your number on the videos, but I haven't heard a response. Probably changed it now. Please contact me when you can. My email is this. All right, that's from Michael. And yes, if anybody knows me, I will email back, but I will never ever text back. I've never sent a text in my life. Never going to, even if my life depended on it. This one's called FE. Mark, I will continue to listen to your videos and enjoy all FE materials, but I'm done telling people, especially family or friends. <clears throat> I thought it was stronger, but I can't take the thinking I'm crazy anymore. I got two cousins that are flight attendants, and my brother says they both see the curve in the air. Of course, my cousins haven't confronted me yet, but one did post a so-called love my job pic on Facebook, and of course, it appears a slight curve out of the window of the plane. I'm just not strong enough to stand against everyone. I just wanted to say thank you, though, for making me question with your videos that I saw first, Flat Earth Clues, but the Bible verses really drove it home for me. I really admire your strength to stand on FE. I will always believe now, but quietly. I shared your videos with family and friends, and they just didn't see what I saw, and they just can't get past the lies. Uh, I, on on my seem to have converted my 74 year old parents but maybe that's just unconditional love anyways i just wanted to say thank you that's from denise uh, denise if you want to show them something honestly i'm going to take the peanut gallery's uh recommendation on this show them the behind the curve documentary which you know uh, peanut gallery told me he goes look it's the best probably introductory video when it comes to flat earth because it's it's coming from both sides and it makes them feel safe while they're watching it and I agree. I've seen it with a bunch of different audiences and seen it myself a number of times. And I, I would say the very same thing. But you know what? Teach their own. Again, the first rule of Flat Club is to not talk about Flat Club. And I know you get a lot of enthusiasm and you want to tell your family and friends, but you got to size them up. You got to know where their head's at. If you've got two cousins that are flight attendants, going to be a little tough. Going to be tough. Sorry, but thank you, Denise. This one's called Science Experiment That Could Prove Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Thanks for reading this. My name is Sonny. I'm from Whitehorse, Yukon, Canada. I'm a longtime flat earther. Been listening to your show recently while driving truck. I download episodes and listen while I'm on the road. This is an experiment that I would like to share with the flat earth community. A science experiment that would prove the sun is closer to us could be measured by where the sun's shadow is cast at the same time of day in different hemispheres, north, south, east, and west. The triangulation of the sun could be measured with a compass, distances between each location, and the angle of the sun's shadow of the horizon done at the exact same time. The further apart from each distance would give better results, like Canada, South America, Hawaii, and New York. Shadows measured at 9, 12, and 6. If the Earth were a ball, the shadows would be should be pointing in the same direction. If the sun travels around the North Pole like a clock, the Northern Hemisphere shadows point north while the Southern hem shadows point south. To triangulate the sun, all four points across the hemisphere would have to place a two-foot peg at sea level. A ruler placed on the end of the shadow and the other end placed on the top of the peg will calculate the angle of the sun. All four sticks will be pointing to the top of the pyramid. Data collected from the shadow angle, a compass to calculate degrees pointing from north distances from each location and the exact time of day would show the distance of the sun and its location on a map. It may it may vary due wow it may be very due to refraction, but I believe if sun correctly the shadows will show the flatness of the hemispheres and the nearby sun. And that's from Sunny. Oh, yeah. It's not bad. Well well thought out experiment, I'll give you that. Cool. This one's called 12 Photos. Hey, Mark, I've been watching you and some other Flat Earth vids. Got to say, I thought it was laughable, but now I'm a believer. Just looking for the pics you are offering so I don't sound like a lunatic when I talk with friends and family. This is the greatest discovery ever. I've always had doubts about the moon landing since they could never get back there. But now can get to Mars? Keep it up. That's from Matthew. Thank you. 
This one's called Flatter Sunset, Water and Sunset Light Reflection Patterns. Mark, here is a time lapse I took last year, clearly showing a reflection to the shoreline. Never realized what I captured as I was just out at the beach taking a time lapse with my new Nikon D810. Hmm, it's the first time I heard that one. Please use footage for whatever you may like, also including a picture I took across Tampa Bay from St. Pete. Enjoy, Jeff Go. And yes, I will save that, and I will take a look at it. I, I rarely will I take a look at the videos right then and there when you send them to me, which is also why I'm trying to catch them in the emails. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm going to have to do these every day, though, until then. Uh, this one's called Denver. Uh, hi, Mark. I'm so excited for Denver. Thanks for sending me the schedule for all the speakers. Is it typical to go to all the speakers because I want to? But then how do they incorporate time for meeting people? Uh, thanks. And yeah, if you guys understood the Denver conference, uh, it's two tracks nowadays and you have to meet people in the lobby and there's special events, you know, like the VIP dinner and the VIP mixer and just the general. And then there was a, an after party that was on Saturday if you stayed till Saturday. And, uh, but I missed it, of course. I went home early for personal reasons. This one's called Your Book. Hi, Mark. Just read your book, Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. Very interesting. I have a lot of questions, but we'll start with just one today. So all the planets, moon and sun, just a decoration and not real. No UFOs and aliens? Please explain. Thanks, James from Florida. Uh, yeah, sun, moon and planets are just tiny, tiny dots, tiny points of light. They're just lights on a ceiling. They're just decoration. Uh, as far as UFOs and aliens, no, I think there's stuff flying around up there. Yeah, but I don't think they're from Mars and Venus and Jupiter I th or Saturn. I think they are older versions of us, previous civilizations. If you have any doubt, again, look up the sunken cities off of Japan or the sunken cities off of India or the Bosnian pyramids or Bimini Road or the real pyramids and so on and so on. They're all out there. Uh, I think that we are not the first group to rent this apartment and we won't be the last. Moving on. How does satellite TV work on flat earth? Hey, Mark, I certainly enjoy your research and videos on YouTube about the earth being flat. I'm a God fearing Christian and have been a flat earther for about nine months now. Much of the Bible makes more sense when reading through flat earth lenses. I have a question. How does the dish and direct TV signals get to my antenna? I have lived in Iowa and now live in Arizona. The antenna in Arizona is pointed at a higher elevation than I was in Iowa. Thank you for your time. Brad Kuhn in Yarnall, Arizona. Uh, look up, well, where should I start with this? I won't take too long though. Uh, look up the NASA high altitude balloon program. Look up, uh, just type in flat earth balloons in into YouTube. You'll see tons of videos. There are a lot of satellites uh, up to four tons uh, in, you know, it's 8,000 pounds, which are launched from various places around the plane and they can stay up there for a long time and every once in a while they will crash so the question is where are the dish signals coming from are they coming from those satellites are they coming from other military aircraft are they coming from a particular point in the dome where you can bounce signals off of don't know don't know to be sure but it is is a good question and, uh, you know, do I, do I believe in satellites? Yes, but I don't believe they are launched on the top of rockets. Do I believe in direct t TV? Obviously people have direct TV. Do I think the signals are being shot from satellites in orbit? No, I do not. This one's called curvature of surface. Uh, hi, Mark. This is dirt popper. I keep hearing of this curvature of surface formula as eight inches per mile squared. Here are some pictures from the book called American Practical Navigator, and it states curvature of surface is eight inches, 8.8 foot per nautical mile. You can verify this online too with the most current version. I use the 2017. Where did this formula come from? Some university. Please respond after doing some research on these formulas. Thank you. And that is interesting. It's also in Wikipedia that it says just eight inches per mile. But in this case, it's 0.8 per nautical mile. Hmm. I, yeah, I will, I will take a look if I get a chance. This one's called No Subject. And somebody linked me a video that says, what happens when you put water balloons in a vacuum chamber? Will they boil or expand? 
That's a great question, and that's a, it's a YouTube video. You can look it up yourself, and they will do actually both because, as some of you may or may not know, water boils at room temperature when it's in a vacuum. And that's a, that's a room temperature it boils in a vacuum. So, it, which is again why your your spacesuits cannot be uh, have any error to them at all because the human body is just this big bag of water uh, with a thick skin over it. And if a human body is put exposed to a vacuum chamber at all, it horrible horrible things happen. And yet they don't seem to take the testing of the astronaut suits very seriously. They don't seem even seem to care. Uh, look at all the shots of when astronauts fell on the moon, and they fell really weirdly, like they were on a harness. Uh, if any time I ever fell on the moon, I would check my suit. Con I would be checking my suit constantly because a single tear in in your astronaut suit, you'd be dead within seconds. So, and yet, you know, we keep seeing these things in space movies and television shows. You get this leak. It's like, oh, I've only got three minutes to get back to the capsule. It's like, what? No, you'd be dead. Like before you could even utter those words. So check that video out when you get a chance. And I will watch it as well. Oops. One sec. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, after many hours of watching several of your videos on Flat Earth, I would like to ask you one question. With all of your research that you have done, what would the one proof be that 100% proves the Earth is flat and at the same time proves the Earth is not a sphere? Thanks, Robbie Mason. There is no such thing as one proof that proves the Earth is flat. If, if there was, no one would look at anything else but that one proof. I think the most common proof that people go to is long distance photography and uh, which is you just go down to the beach with a digital zoom camera and zoom in at an object that is far away and depending on the weather conditions you will see objects that are very far away but they should be on the other side of the curve that is that's the one that's i think has convinced most people or put doubt in the globe more than anything so hopefully that helps this one's called Questions. Dear Mark Sargent, I've been watching all your videos on YouTube as well as Rob Skiba, Jaronism, and many others. I learned a lot and thank you for spreading the truth. Just wanted to suggest a few questions for your next documentary unless you had already done so. I was watching the Parker Solar Probe, which is on its way to the sun. I learned that at some point it'll reach a speed of 430 miles, thousand miles per hour on its way to the sun. Well, let's say this is true. As far as I understand is that the sun is moving into the universe, we were told, at 600,000 miles an hour. The question is, how in the world that spacecraft called Parker Solar Probe get close to the sun? The sun is moving faster, right? The same thing will apply to the moon trip. How did Apollo get to the moon if the moon is flying into space? At what speed is the moon going into space, we were told? Uh, we were told that the earth spins and rotates around the sun, etc., and everything moves together with the atmosphere. So the clouds move first, then anything in the air like mosquitoes, bees, airplanes, bullets. Then the earth pushes everything into space. My brain is not able to accept that. My brain is telling me that one plus one always equals two. If everything moves together with the atmosphere, then why do we see clouds moving? Keep doing the great work, Mark. I have a lot of respect for you. There's no curvature and the earth is flat. Uh, and that's from Atuf out of Ontario, Canada. And yeah, all, all these points and, and questions you raised are valid. Absolutely. Which let, let's get into it real quick, which is, you know, the earth, forget about the earth spinning on the equator a thousand miles an hour. Most people know that, but the earth is supposedly also spinning around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour. And then the solar system is flying sideways through space like a like a dinner plate side plate sideways through space it's supposedly half a million miles an hour and so on and so on well the problem is is you've got these gaps in between the planets uh supposedly again if you believe mainstream science called lagrange points where gravity doesn't have an effect so what happens when an object is traveling you know from planet to planet or like say from earth to mars once it gets into a lagrange point well, that's it, because you remember the solar system is flying si sideways at half a million miles an hour. There's no, there's not enough gravity to keep it going. It's, remember, it's a Lagrange point, so that we the solar system just loses that probe in the dust. Anything that's sent out once it hits a Lagrange point should be lost in the dust. Maybe even between the Earth and the Moon. 
So why doesn't that happen? Why don't we ever see that? All the probes work perfectly. We have comets flying in and out of the solar system. You know, how does how does Halley's Comet, which come loops back around every 70-something years, if the solar system is traveling sideways at half a million miles an hour, what's pulling it back to where it's actually accelerating against the sun? Would, really? Gravity? Gravity is the, the magical thing that, that cures all ills in this case? No. No, not buying it. This one's called Method for Proving Flat Earth. Mark, if you fly a magnetic east or west course south of the equator from point to point, the distance will be greater the farther south you go. Ideally, fly the equator east to west from point to point around the world. Calculate the distance. Fly south 1,000 miles and fly a course east to west from point to point. Calculate the distance. If we live on a globe, the distance will be shorter. If we live on a plane, the dis distance will be more. Preferably, the same direction should be used each time... Uh, to keep the test more scientific. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, it's a good idea, Randy, except for one thing. How are you calculating the distance? Because if you're using GPS, not to use a line from the matrix, but GPS was designed by the United States military. And it's going to tell you not only where it wants you, it wants to show you, you know, where you are, but it's also going to tell you the distance that it wants to tell you. So again, like the ideas, but don't forget the little things. Like in this case, how is distance calculated? Moving on. This one's called No Subject. Hey, Mark, my name is Josh from Portland, Maine. Yeah, that's cool. It's up in the Stephen King area. That's where most of his uh, books were written. Well, not just written, but um, set. He was a big believer. It's like, oh yeah, everything's set up in Maine. Wow, it's cool. Uh, I was wondering if you knew of any way to set up a meetup or any way to connect when, with any other flat earthers in my area. I've been convinced for a couple years now that I'm not living on a spinning water ball. And to be honest, it gets a bit frustrating and lonely when even your best friends think you're insane for questioning the shape of the earth. Any input would be greatly appreciated. And thanks for helping me wake up as well. Peace and stay flat. Josh. Uh, yeah, if you want to do a meetup in your area, just and and you don't know exactly how to do it just pick a restaurant or a bar or some sort of meeting place and then give me uh, where it's going to be what time and your best contact info and i will try to get a promo up on my channel as soon as possible and from what i understand it works people will show up if you build the meetup they will come and even up in portland maine I guarantee it because we have people everywhere, every country, every town, every little suburb. We're all over the place. This one's called five questions and 12 slides. Mark, please send me the five questions and 12 slides. I'm very new to this FE and want to have this to share with others. Thanks so much for your work. And that's from Susan. Very welcome, Susan. And I sent it to her. This one's called Just Woke Up. Hey, Mark, I just woke up a couple months back. I was bored and starting to look into 9-11 and other questionable happenings around the world. God bless Judy Wood. This led me to Flat Earth Info. I thought it was nuts, but everything lined up with God's word. It helps to already have a Christian worldview. My grown children do not have this, and I am hoping you have resources for those who don't start off this way. If you have anything I can use, I'm preparing to talk to them when they come to Tennessee in a couple weeks. Please send to Shelly Haynes, and she's in Johnson City, Tennessee. If this doesn't work, they may decide it's time for them to get the power of attorney. Old mom's finally lost it. Thanks for much for all you do. Love in Christ, Shelly. And I will send her. I will send her some info. Hopefully, this one's called Slides Guides and sorry, Slides Guide and Five Questions. Hi, Mark. Love your show. Can you please send me your survival guide, the five questions and 12 slides? Thank you. Keep it flat. Pam. And yes, I sent that. All you have to do is, is send me an email like that, and I will send you the, the five questions that I gave to the Georgetown University professors and the 12 slides from Just Jack and the survival guide, which I wrote some years ago after Katrina. This one's also called 12 Slides. Hey, Mark, could you please send me the 12 slides? I've been a convert for two years, but I'm ridiculed at every point. Duh, they're so brainwashed. Thanks so much, Oliver Hammer, a.k.a. The Hammer. <laughs> really shocking. Out of Sydney, Australia. This one's called Short Film. 
Hey Mark, Sean here again from Greenwood, Indiana. I posted a short film on YouTube and thought you may enjoy it. I used the betrayal of Robert the Bruce scene from Braveheart, and I think it came out pretty good. Pretty good. Hope you dig it. Keep it flat. The title is uh, Realize, Realize, yeah, Braveheart Edition. Yep, I watched it. It was good. I liked it. Enjoyed it. This one's called Help. All caps with four exclamation points. Greetings, Mark. I sent you an email a couple of months ago when I first started opening my eyes. I've been watching videos and looking at the clues myself to make my own judgments. I've talked to my wife about this and she gets mad and thinks I'm crazy. She doesn't want to hear any more about it. I talked to my son and pointed out the moon and sun both being visible, and the moon was only uh, one quarter. I have talked to my brother, who became born-again Christian over 40 years ago, about the firmament. I talked to one of my oldest friends that I used to play pool with and pointed out the geometry and the moon and sun in the sky and why the moon would not always be illuminated. Nobody wants to open their mind, eyes, or ears. Nobody wants to listen. I don't know for a fact that the shape of the earth what the shape of the earth is. I just want to talk to somebody about this. I'm afraid to discuss this at work for fear of losing my job. Do you know of anyone in the Pasadena area that might be able to talk to? I just miss the Pasadena and Arcadia meets. Thank you, Grant. Yeah, Grant, there's tons of people in California. If you're listening to this, go just type in flat earth meetup. You know what? I'm going to email him and just send him the, the meetup list. Tons. All you have to do, it, it, the, the contact info for anyone that's organizing the meetups is at the at the very last slide of the meetups, and it's also in the, the very first comment. I pin it as the very first comment in the comment section. So check that out if you get a chance. I will send him a list to my, um, uh, my playlist of the Flat Earth meetups, which is on my YouTube channel. And you guys can look that up as well. Or again, you could just type in, in YouTube, type in Flat Earth meetup, and then whatever city is near you, and see if something pops up. Most of the time, it, it does. This is called Globe Test. Mark, I watched D Marble's video, 100% flat earth proof. The sun is a smoking gun. And his follow-up video, The Sun is a Smoking Gun Part 2. <laughs> In the first, on in, in August 15th, 2017, at 1 p.m. local time in Tacoma, D calls, wow, you actually time date stamped it in the email. That is that is specific. Okay, let's keep, keep going with this. Uh, D calls a friend in Bradford, West Yorkshire, England, at 9.03 local time, and a friend in Beolia, Central Queensland, Australia. I know I butchered the names on these. Sorry, guys. 6.06 a.m. local time. Who could each almost see the sun? According to the globe model, not more nor less than about 50% of the Earth should be directly illuminated by the sun at a given time. I marked the three locations with the sun almost directly over Tacoma, 1 p.m., and I could not see the other two locations simultaneously using a globe. So this begs the question, what would be the most extreme occurrence of this phenomenon? The longest day might occur on or about the summer solstice, June 21st, and the longest night around December 21st. In fact, with the winter solstice approaching, this would make a good contest for the peanut gallery. Find the two furthest separated cities, towns, not directly illuminated, longest night at any given time near the solstice. Next summer, new contest. Find the two furthest towns directly illuminated at the same time. The prize might be a t-shirt signed by you and several other flatter celebrities uh, attending the FE 2018 in Denver. Rules. Both cities and towns less than 2,000 feet elevation. Two. Only cities and towns labeled on a 12-inch Globemaster globe. Three. Use sunrise and sunset times from weather.com or other authoritative rep website provide screenshots. Four. Entries emailed between 24 hours before and 24 hours after the solstice. Five. Sunrise sunset times must be separated by at least two minutes to make sure times do not overlap due to rounding the seconds. Six. Time of longest day night occurring between 48 hours before solstice to 24 hours after. Thank you, Peter Jarvio. Cool. That is that is an, a very well thought out test. Awesome. Thank you for that. This one's called FAO Mark Sargent. Dear Mark Sargent, I know you are busy, but please, would you spend just a minute on this? I've been researching Flat Earth for almost a year now, and I've noticed something quite sinister happening when you Google search the subject. It used to be quite easy finding Flat Earth proof videos, but suddenly I've noticed that when you try, you get mainly pages of Flat Earth debunking sites. No matter how 
you word the search weighted in favor of flat earth research information you always get mainly the anti-flat earth ridiculing sites and videos it seems to have happened quite suddenly in the last few months and certainly wasn't the case when i embarked down this path it's as though google has done something with their search algorithms or whatever am i being paranoid perhaps you could look into this yourself and put my mind at rest it's bad enough facing up to the possibility of science lying wholesale without having to contend with another deception all the best andy from uk yeah i've i've heard this as well i've had different people send me uh, algorithms and it's interesting what's happening with google i they, they 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 don't seem to be shutting it down they just seem to be curbing our enthusiasm and it's not the first time they've done it you know google owns youtube entirely and they've done this on youtube several times to where finally they tore down the youtube scoreboard which is so weird because it is it is internet 101 which is if you type anything to any search engine it actually says i mean it's literally part of the title search results equals a number it lets you know it always has uh, how popular a title is or subject that you're that you're putting in there and youtube pulled that down this year 2018 because we we started trending even higher than the president of the united states i i made a video on it literally called flat earth catches the president of the united states and then a few weeks later somebody emailed me they said look the scoreboard's gone it's like what and then it's gone it's, it's literally not on youtube anymore you can type it in all you want they will only show you results the 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 video results they will not show you the number this the whole line search results equals gone just just pushed out which is I, i've never ever seen that before in, in the internet so interesting this one's called flat earth religion Mark, thanks for the videos. Very good question you make sense on. If it finally comes out, they would blame NASA, then scientists, government, churches would go on a rampage. So as a whole, would this change be good for population or people? At first, I could not wait till this came out, but now you make sense. Would it be harmful? By the way, when I was in middle school, I wrote a paper on uh, for class on how we were in an aquarium and being watched and given so much info to see how far we will go and become this is so cool this is finally coming out thanks for all your time mike sands and yeah it's, will this be harmful i i highly doubt it at this point i was a little nervous too when i when i first made the clues but now i'm more confident that we would do the right thing because we've had hundreds of meetups and multiple conferences in different countries and there hasn't been a single incident even by the trolls we even had a single incident. Nobody's nobody's hit anybody. Nobody's shot anybody. Nobody's blown anything up. Can you say that about any other group? Nope. So I, and honestly, at this point, I'm just going to keep pushing forward because it, whatever's going to happen has got to be better than the world we have now. Uh, nobody, I, I can't, I, I hardly ever see anyone that walks through life and saying, oh, life is great. It's wonderful. And skipping and jumping and playing with butterflies. Don't ever see it. You know, to use the line from the Matrix, uh, human beings seem to define the reality through misery and suffering. And I think that the flat Earth has a has a real good chance at changing that. This one's called GIF from Michael Mahoney. Uh, Mark, you, Dubay, Tiger Dan, were all wrong about the sun, and I will take a look at that GIF later. I don't get GIFs very often, or GIFs. However, I don't care the this one's called lumpy earth from the show tonight hey dude this is zerolath who called in shoot me all the good stuff here this is what i referenced although not flat earth there is also a lot of content about other anomalies like evolution etc this was back in the late 1990s all right and the link goes to a video called lloyd pie everything you know is wrong it was posted, oh, wow, back in 2013. It's it's called Lloyd Pi. Lloyd, and then P-Y-E, everything you know is wrong. All right. From the 1999 Winter Seminars. Huh. That is interesting. All right, I'll take a look at that. This one's called International Trans-Antarctica Expedition from the Steger Wilderness Center. 
Hi, Mark. I started a FE discussion with family. With my first point, there is no perpetual motion. And from them, learned of Will Steger expedition. Do you know of that? Thanks for all you do, Anne. Uh, let's see. It's at the stegenwildernesscenter.org category expeditions. Check it out if you got a chance. This one's called From Switzerland to Mark Sargent. Hello, Mark. Initially, I wish to congratulate you for your maintained focus, holding on to a respectful attitude towards the big issues surrounding our world's actual shape. Short summary, 1997, I stumbled across, uh, upon David Icke. The truth will set you free. Coming from an academic background, studied religious philosophy at Uppsala University in Sweden, that book made an impact. Being a behaviorist with special interest within religious philosophy, I consider myself today being quite clear about most reasons behind why nations, global media, politics behaves the way they are. When I got to know the story of Admiral Byrd some 10 years back, I felt, wow, what an adventure figure. So, because of my appreciation towards your YouTube videos, which is which I regularly listen to, I felt I wanted to inform you about my poetic side, including Admiral Admiral Byrd within my new music album, Os Beggar Chronicle, and it's on Spotify.com. You can also reach the track on Amazon and iTunes. Wish to reach out and hope you will have a great walk of life ahead. All the best wishes from my Swiss Alps. I left Sweden 25 years ago. The mountains is my home. Carl Nesselis. Cool. Thank you for that. This one's called Good Video. Mark, I liked the UK tour finale video. Matt, thank you. The, I, I helped make that for those guys. The um, uh, the tour video with, with Roxanne Glenn and, and all the guys that were traveling in the RV over in the UK. Uh, what, a, what a great venture. And I hear in, in 2019, they're going to make it even better. Uh, I was, was just thrilled to help them any way I could. This one's called Flat Smack Stuff. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your data. In speaking with someone who tends to the globe, a link was given wherein your five points were explained away <laughs> Yeah, huh? at the Canadian conference. It seemed that clarification on these points would be helpful to your counter arguments against them. Here are a few points collected based on the video with its link. Thank you for your efforts and steadfastness. Uh, counter to point number uh, one objects not perspectively behind horizon unless distance is absolutely known uh -huh. Two, buoyancy atmospheric pressure related to height three supposed size of the sun is 400 times larger and forms cone shape how do we know it forms a cone shape and not a parallel shape where do we see a penumbra umbra naturally different parts of earth would see different angles of moon unless a projection Four, 500 years astronomy 70 years space travel confirmation bias radiative cooling slowed heat radiation to atmosphere and five flight paths were chosen to avoid the most radiation and did it quickly to, to minimize exposure of ionizing radiation stopped by aluminum and epoxy which would be fine if that type of radiation were the only kind in space hmm. all right then thank you for that this one's called poster Mark, for those who aren't there yet, you should have a poster like on the X-Files that says, I want to believe, except instead of a flying saucer, you should have a picture of Flat Earth. That's from Ron Alvarado. And yeah, I, that, that meme's already been out there. There's so many Flat Earth memes right now. This one's called Fellow Flat Earther Needs Help. Mark. Hello, my name is Andrew Martinez. I live in a small town in Tennessee, and I've been a flat earth believer for a year now, and so far I got my dad into it, but also steadily having to argue with my oldest brother, Greg. I try and show him it's way more than a flat earth. His big argument is why would they lie to, why would they lie, and do you think all these people are in on it? NASA, Gov, uh, you know. I have a hard time explaining it to him, and he will listen to my problem. It's is he having a rough time right now? And I'm not sure. Wait, I'm not going to lie. He's in jail. <laughs> you know, if you're a flat earther in jail, I don't even know what that effect would be. And he's been in and out his whole life. I think he learns more or can or maybe read the right stuff explained in a way for him to understand better. It would really help him. So my favor is 
to see if you have any good books. I get to him that's that all he can get is softback books and maybe some flatter stuff. I can pass around not too many people around seem to believe it would be awesome if you had some material for me to learn better so I can explain better. But thank you for your time. And that's from Andrew. And yeah, you know what? I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll recommend the um, uh, softback edition because it's only in softback of Flat Earth Clues. So yes, I will send him the book link to Flat Earth Clues and hopefully that'll help. This one's called Neil Armstrong's Personal Items to Go Under the Hammer. That was sent to myself and Patricia and it's a YouTube video and it's called Start Bidding Neil Armstrong's Personal Items to Go Under the Hammer. Oh, right. The Bidding Hammer. That's That was actually published by RT, Russia Today. Dot com and I don't know much about what what they went for but don't I would not be bidding on any Apollo things if I were you this one's called no subject hi Mark I have recently found out the flattest earth and have watched a few of your videos great work uh, Dean cool awesome this one's called old boy here hi Mark a year ago my son got me on Rob Skiba's material I've not been the same since. I remember my Uncle Roy telling me not to stare at the moon so much in 1970. Why, why not stare at the moon? He said it would harm my vision. He said he would dismantle his telescope, which he did not. Only years later did I learn that Neil Armstrong was on staff at UC in the Ohio Valley. I think it's perhaps to his credit that he remained rather low key on matters until his death. Imagine the clear conversation pre-recorded for 1969 with Dick Nixon to the moon, 240,000 miles away. Thanks for your work, Lee. Don't stop. And that's cool. Thank you for that. This one's called meetups. Hi, Mark. Hope you're having a great flat day. My name is John Menke. I have watched your videos on the meetups and others. Also saw the one just recently in Jacksonville, Florida. I have a question. Is there going to be one in Orlando or has that passed? Also, is there a place I can go see what flat earth events are planned and where I would really like the opportunity to hang out, converse and engage with the flat earth community outside of the internet. I'm extremely upset. I can't make the conference in Denver, but I live in Orlando. And if there's a meetup here, pencil me in all the, uh, and all the FE friends I have, I appreciate all you do for the flat earth community. And thanks for any info in advance. Thank you, fellow flat earther, John. Again, I, I think we just did one in Orlando. Type in flat earth meetup, Florida. In YouTube and hopefully you will see a bunch that'll pop up or most of them of course have, have passed there's not too many in front of us at the moment because of the holiday season uh, but you will see the contact info for, for anyone else is down there just email them just flat earthers are very very friendly email them and say hey anyone gonna do a meetup anytime soon again gonna be a little tougher in December because of the holidays people are gonna be traveling but you never know this one's called status quo Hello, Mark. My name is Gabby. I'm 20 years old, have fallen deep, deep into the world of flat earth. So I guess the real world. When watching your video status quo, you spoke about how some people would run into religion, begging to know what more has been a lie and what else they can teach us. I guess my question is, are you saying that just because religion was right doesn't mean the whole Bible, for example, is correct? I'm just a little lost because if we can trust science, but we can't trust religion, what do we trust? I'm sure my questions will be answered once I go further into the series, but seeing your email so easily obtainable, I figured I would reach out. Thank you. This is amazing content that is blowing my mind, Gabby. Um, okay, I know. No, no, no. What, what I'm saying is, is that people would, once science, uh, the credibility of science starts getting hit, people will naturally turn to religion and religion has a responsibility to temper their vengeance <laughs> because religion has been beaten over the head with textbooks for the last 500 years. That's all I'm really saying there. I'm not saying that you can't trust religion. I mean, religion is a big part of our lives. Uh, the five major religious houses control 80% I think of the, the, the religious doctrines of, of the world. And so what I'm just saying, I'm not saying that you can't trust religion. I'm saying that you've got to 
go into everything with an open mind. That's probably the safest answer. This one's called Pear Shaped World. Mr. Sergeant, I was listening to Neil Ducre <laughs> Nile Disgrace Treason. <laughs> I see what you did there, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Blathering on about our planets being more pear shaped than oblate spheroid. Is this f their new programming that covers the actual shape of the world, a world that reflects the topography of the Orlando Ferguson map? NASA and the Authority are very aware that we are using our power, sorry, tower-based GPS and calculations to question and confirm our world shape. Just a thought, Joe Trimble. A world that reflects the topography. You know, I've always been a fan of the Orlando Ferguson map from the 1800s. I, that was what I really started with. But people told me to, to stay away from that because it had some sort, it was kind of shaped like a roulette table. And then they said, oh, you can't say the world roulette table because if you add all the numbers of the roulette table up, they add up to 666, which is true, by the way. That's really, really weird. Uh, but the other thing I liked about the, the thing I liked most about the Orlando Ferguson map was that it is square. So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a circular shape on the inside, but the outer borders are, are squared off and they, you know, showed four angels, the four corners of the earth. And that would make sense to me because if we are in a building in some sort of soundstage, studio, planetarium, terrarium, in most cases, the edges are square because engineers like right angles. In fact, machines have a very, very tough time drawing pure circles. It's always just little tiny, tiny round, right angles. If you have any uh, doubt of that, look at the pixels on your computer screen. But the computer screen can be any shape it wants, but when it gets to the outer edges, it's always square. The televisions are always square. Uh, real estate plots are always square. We have states that are completely square and, and so on and so on. Uh, machines like squares. We, we do. Uh, now, you can be, you can draw whatever circles you want on the inside, but the outer borders, yeah, engineering-wise, it's it's much, much easier. Okay, we're, we're going to wrap up this one here pretty soon. Let's see if we can find a good one to end on. This one's called Watch How the Southern Stars Work on Flat Earth. Mark, I like this perspective. Could could be the closest thing I have seen that explains the sky above us in an enclosed system. Pretty short too. I know you are definitely not a fan of Eric Dubay, but there is no audio and it really got my wheels turning. But this is my cursory option. Sorry, opinion. It may change upon closer examination. Study and scrutiny. Definitely would be curious of your opinion on air when you finally get to this email in a month or so. Perhaps you already viewed this 15-minute video. And thanks as always, Mark. By the way, I finally got to flat smack some youngsters while answering questions concerning God's word during Sunday afternoon ministry up outside of my church. It felt good to give them nothing but the truth. Peace to you again, my friend, William, the ADP question guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He asked me a question one time about the, um, about ADP and the, um, a, sorry, automatic data processing, the, um, our automated data processing. It's a company that was one of our competitors when we were doing time and attendance along with Kronos and, and others. And they probably, it, it, he asked me a time and attendance question, which was hilarious. Cause I, I haven't gotten a time and attendance question in oh, years. It was nice to get one again. This one's called 1959 Rand McNally Universe Atlas Book Flat Earth Map. Mark came across this book with Flat Earth Map on a Space Atlas book. You have probably seen this, but maybe not. Keep up the good work, Patty. Cool. Oh, I should probably take a look at that map. It's two megs and yeah, Universal Atlas of the Entire Solar System by Rand McNally. Yeah, and, and it is a Flat Earth Map. Interesting. This one's called 12 Slides, Please. Mark, I was keeping a poster on my wall of the painting, The Great Library of Alexandria, for years trying to figure out the hidden code in it until I came across Flat Earth and never really sunk in. It's the dome. There might also be some musical keys in there and surely more secrets. Enjoying your videos. A great big thanks for your time and effort to expose this deception. Would love to make the conference in Colorado, but I'm working on renewing my driver's license. Blessings, Martha. Thank you, Martha. This one's called Five Questions. Hi, Mark. I received a Celebrate Truth live stream video that was sent to me. And in the beginning, a gentleman was speaking 
to five how come questions presented to a college professor for the purpose of him trying to debunk a flat earther just to hear his spin the response was crickets as expected those five questions to this video seems to have been deleted probably because the live streaming had ended i was told that was you and if so where do i find those five questions so i may present them to others about me what we may have in common uh let's see knowledge of a flat plane earth this was taught to me and four other students in private mentoring sessions by an ex-jesuit priest that left the order due to the jesuit oath being exposed by a french author in the early 1970s we started by focusing on the writings and symbols left behind by the sumerians gilgamesh babylon enoch jasher and ezekiel as study for the beginnings of mankind and their beliefs this was also a good exercise for identifying the good guys from the bad deceivers and sharers of the truth and a, and a brother's keeper this jesuit mentor had much field experience as an archaeologist and geologist working in the middle east and africa turkey and south and central america overall wherever the grounded spiritual people lived the jesuits sought them he showed us mostly by pictures of artifacts in the possession of the Vatican and the German vaults. It seems like the Vatican and Germany had been working together since the 1800s, seeking ancient secrets. Germany had developed ground penetrating radar, which gave them an advantage in these buried discoveries. We saw painted symbols, stone carvings of the images of the flat earth, even viewed where land masses were before the floods and other catastrophic events happened. The earth was anything but flat, having huge mountains and a Abyss beneath the oceans where previous civilizations were built a flat plain at best one could determine however the placement of the continents as i remember were similar but the diameter of the edge appeared to be much more vast the older civilizations at the bottom of the seas were referred to as the tree of knowledge civilizations the fallen ones that misused it for their self-serving needs of a few Pictures of planets from Vatican observatories were much different than NASA pics. Yes, there is more, but thought to share at least this. I work with a group of 30 parents and other and their children introducing the Book of Enoch. Do you have any suggestions of videos, especially those with animation for children 12 to 16 years old on the flatter subjects? And that's from Richard. Uh, good stuff, Richard. Thank you for that email. And I don't have, as far as videos go for children, that's going to be a little tough. Um, but I'll see if I can dig up something. I, I don't have nothing off the top of my head right now, but I'll, I'll try to send that to him when I get a chance. So let's call that one good. That was 102. Thank you for everybody that sent their email so far. And thank you for everybody that's going to be emailing me in the future. The email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.